All right, guys. Back with the big block Chevy. It's been several days since I did any work and showed you guys. It's been a hell of a week. What, uh, where we are now is, first one was the, what they consider the good port. This one, well, they consider a good port or the long port. This one is considered the short port or the bad port. Okay, this one aims more at the cylinder wall like a small block board. Okay, we can see our our liquid is on the other side of the bowl. Okay, because the port's aimed in a different direction. This is more like we saw on uh, the small block Ford heads that I have that the cast iron trick flows look just like that. All right? We do have a nice wide sloth. Okay. We use the same valve. It actually looks the liquid looks really good around that intake valve. Really good. And it's not easy to see, but we've got blue all the way around that because it's aimed. It's aimed more at this corner, you know. The port is aiming right over to here. So it definitely carries some liquid over there. We got a nice spot on the chamber. Does it look the same as this one? It's not nearly as different as I would have expected. Remember, I'm spraying I'm spraying and trying to make it as equal as I can, but I don't see nearly as much splattered around the exhaust. Maybe I sprayed a little bit less. But in any case, if we can compare them, they're really not that... As far as width and splatter and direction, I'm surprised how, how close they are together, right? Let's take a look, a little bit different look. Okay, you can see we got a lot of blue on that left side of that port. The port was basically cleaned up, right? I took off that real rough, aggressive burr texture because I wanted to do a lighter burr texture. And I took the lumps and bumps out for my, you know, 90s porting. It's really all I did to it. Okay, I worked on shrinking up the valve job a little bit. Okay, the valve job was shrunk. It's not nearly as wide as it was. The exhaust is not nearly as wide. It has a, a radius that goes right to the seat. Okay, and the, the chamber got cleaned up, but it didn't get, you know, like a fuely notch or anything like that. I'm willing to bet you could gain some flow by doing, by taking a piece of that chamber out and doing that. Okay, the exhaust valve's got some splatters on, on the top of it. You can kind of see the direction it goes around, right? It's going around this way. Okay, now they call it the bad port because it usually flows less. Well, this is our good port with some cleanup. Right, we went over these already. That's not bad. 356, you should be able to make some decent power with, you know, 342, 356, something like that. That's not bad. Remember, it's a 219 valve. It's not... You can put a bigger valve in this. You could probably put up to a 2.3 inch valve in these heads. Okay? If you really wanted to go nuts, you put a... You shrink the guide, right? You put an 11 seconds or even a 1... a 5 16th guide with a 2.3, it'll pick up it'll pick up quite a bit. And remember, this is a cleanup. I haven't gone through and developed anything according to my air speeds, you know. According to my air speeds, it could use work. I mean, look at the difference I've got on that short side. 361, 314. I, I can I could definitely jiggle some of that stuff around and get a little more a little more action out of it. So the bad port We've got our minuses on this side versus the good port. Now, last time I did some big block Chevy work, it wasn't quite this bad. The, the bad port wasn't really down this much. This one's really, really down. 
almost to the point where I thought maybe I didn't have it on the bore right or something. But we'll see. I'm going to do a little more work to it. I do have something really cool to show you guys, too, before I forget. You know, the reason I'm doing this project is for that 565 big block boat project, uh, dual engines. And I'm going to uh, work up a performer RPM air gap for the uh, customer. Let's take a quick look at our, our swirls, right? These were actually a bit high. These are minus, minus, minus. Looks like I stopped writing the minuses, but it looks like there are minuses everywhere. Okay, so you got left, less flow and you've got less swirl. But you still have more than enough swirl to get the job done. Plenty. You got enough swirl at 300 lift. Which you wouldn't even think, right? You know, meaning that the messy bench, you know, the port is aimed this way. You wouldn't expect to get good swirl coming out of this, but you do. All right, a quick look at our air speeds, right? This is good port air speeds. This is bad port air speeds. Minus, minus, minus. So it's going to be at 0.6 inch lift. So it's moving a lot less air. You're going to get less air speed. According to the roof, you only got one plus, and it's only up a couple, a couple feet per second, you know. You got to remember, it's also twisted completely differently. You got the way it's designed, and it was funny when I was blowing uh, chips through the port. They didn't fly out of the port the way I figured they would. It was really, it was actually quite interesting. When I blow chips through the port, I actually watch it, and it all comes out right here mostly on this side right here and if you take a look that's kind of narrowed down on that part this part here is tiny compared to this part here look how much room we have here so we get very high speed air going through here now in reality we might be able to take a good amount of metal out of that and, and do some serious work to it i don't know how crazy i'm going to get you know you know how i get but that might, might be something to look into. And as far as our short side radius, we're moving less air. So we also have less air speed. Actually, we got, I mismarked this. We're faster right in the center here. This is a plus. And you know what? This is a plus too. I goofed up twice. That's all right. It actually looks like it's moving more air on the short side than the good port. That's kind of interesting, too. So, what I'm going to wind up doing... I know what I have to show you. All right. Let me move some stuff around. Be right back. Okay, I picked this up on Facebook Marketplace. This is an older version. This is a C427X Edelbrock. I'm pretty sure somebody hacked this divider out. But then again... I haven't really looked at uh, any old pictures. That may be from the factory like that, but I don't think so. And it's it's an old it's an older older design, like Holly flange, even though it has the bolts to do uh, a spread bore. It's it's definitely square bore up top. You would have to machine it out. They they gave you enough metal here on the pads to machine it out for quadrajet thermal quad design, spread board design, but it's it's a Holly design now. And the reason I, I, it caught my eye was like, you know, I'm getting that Performer RPM air gap. I wonder how it'll do against an older design. Yeah, it's not an air gap, right? So it's going to run a little bit hotter. But as far as airflow... These have pretty generous, pretty generous runners, okay? We're going to go through this whole thing. I'm going to test this bone stock, well, the way it is. Now, I have to find out if this notch was here originally or not. If it was, if this notch is modified, and it looks like it was, because it's, it looks like it was done by somebody. If not, I'm going to uh, 
fill it and put a little duct tape around it or something to test it with. And then we can uh, remove that and do some more testing. It looks like it was... I don't think this is paint. This may even have been ceramic coated at, at one point. Um, it's got a couple of helicoils i got to put in it. But overall, it's not bad. And it was, you know, picked up at a small percentage of what a new manifold costs. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if it does well against the newer designs, which I think it will. And uh, give people a, a little info on what's available, because new stuff is very expensive. New stuff is great, but you got to know what to look for. You know, you got to look for got to look for all your threads, make sure these aren't cracked. People over tighten these and crack these. Not that they can't be welded, they can, you know. We have a couple heel coils we got to put in. This one usually gets stripped out too. These guys over tighten, over tighten the distributor, they like to strip it out. But overall, it doesn't have any broken chunks on it. You know, it's probably 70s, I'm going to guess. Maybe even older than that. All right, guys. So we'll do a, a full workup on this. We know that the the bad port is down quite a bit. I may do a little work on that bad port and see if I can bring it up a little bit. The good port, we're right at 342, 356. That's a decent test for a dual plane intake manifold, I would think. You can give me some feedback and see if we're, we're goofing that up. Let me just roll this over. You guys can look at it. Okay, a little tough to get light in there, but you can see it's rectangular ports. You can see, I'm hoping you can see, it really doesn't look bad on the inside. Some of the turns are a little sharper than I think they should be, but, you know, a lot of manifolds are like that. This one was actually in pretty decent shape, almost no corrosion. It's definitely usable. So we'll do some testing on it. I may wind up doing my my sleeper bit with it who knows but uh, this is going to get worked up as well and then uh, maybe somebody can use it you know like I say the runners the runners really aren't bad they're big it's a rectangular port and it's designed to move a lot of air of course it's uh, the original specs I bet you know, it's only designed to run about 5,500 RPM. If you guys can find out the older specs on this, that'd be great. Let us know. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.